finally, a one-word episode title that says a lot. Hello, hello. Welcome back, everyone. This is Asha Media TV. My name is Asha. For those of you that are new here, welcome, welcome. This is where I like to watch, react, and review a variety of stuff related to sci-fi, fantasy, and comic books. So, in today's video, I am going to be watching episode 6 of the fourth season of The Expanse, and this one is titled Displacement. But before I press play on this episode, I do need to cover some basic stuff, so if you're new to my channel, please don't skip ahead and listen up. Number one! In case you missed it in the title, spoilers ahead, spoilers ahead, spoilers ahead. And number two, it is very likely you've come across older videos on my channel that I'm not sure I'm going to get rid of just yet, but either way, they're there and they do show video footage and or clips related to the episode. Unfortunately, I can no longer provide those kinds of reactions here on my channel for very valid legal reasons. Therefore, what I do offer instead is a watch-along experience where it is best if you get access to the episode on your end, I have it on my end, we sync up together using my visual and vocal cues that I provide in this video, and we watch the episode together, so to speak. However, yes, 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 I'm very much aware that many of you do not like those kinds of reactions here on YouTube. So, I do offer an alternate version to my reaction to this episode with bonus content and extra perks that you can get access to, and details about that is in the description box below. And lastly, if you choose to leave a comment related to this episode, please start off your comment with no spoilers, followed by a non-spoiler comment. Otherwise, I am skipping right past it, so if you want me to read your comment, just follow that very simple instruction. I get some assurance that there won't be any spoilers in your comment by you making that claim at the beginning of your sentence, and you in return get my acknowledgement of your comment, especially if it's something I really appreciate and I reply back accordingly. It's win-win. All right, everyone, let's now get ready to press play on this episode. We left off with Holden trying his very darnest to keep the peace between the RCE and the Belters, and he's not doing such a great job, even though he is trying his best. He's trying his best. And uh, yeah, the cliffhanger, of course, which was this huge explosion, eruption of some kind of fiery <laughs> thing happening on Illus. Thank you for those of you that were kind enough to at least just confirm that, because that's all I was asking. I really appreciate that. And uh, yeah, so let's see what that's all about. And based on the title, which I think says a lot, there's going to be some shifting around, right? Some displacement of people and things and what they're of. So I'm looking forward to see what that is. And if you are going to watch it with me, let's go. If not, hopefully I'll see you somewhere else in this video. <laughs> Hello again. Okay, so let me give you a quick explainer as to how my watch along experience works. I line up right at the beginning of the episode. I don't skip the intro. You'll see a cue on the screen as well as getting my vocal cue when I press play, pause, or rewind. I tend to pause for three specific reasons. Number one, buffering lagging issues. Number two is to rewind back somewhere in the scene or in the episode. And number three, which is the most common with this particular series, it's to have a commentary moment, especially when I'm really confused or something's really shocking to me and I need your feedback and whatever it is, it's my tete-a-tete -tete with you, my viewer, okay? So anticipate those kinds of pauses to happen more often than none. Sometimes a bit abrupt too as well, just letting you know, but I am trying my best to be, uh, you know, calm it down a little bit with that. So hopefully what I've provided on the screen for you will help you follow along a lot easier, especially if you don't have access to the episode and when you get to my reaction, you'll see what I mean. Nonetheless, as a reminder, I do offer a much more stress-free version <laughs> of my reaction to this episode that you can check out with bonus content and extra perks that you can explore. Details about that in the description box below. But if you're cool with the way things are right now and you want to follow along, let's get ready to go. Okay? Okay. Okay, Screaming Firehawks, we are now going to count down to play. Three, two, one, play.
Oh, it's a whole arm? Right? Just take your phone call. <laughs> right? So that's what happened to the dinosaurs. <laughs> Thank you, Amos. <laughs> it's like, shut your bickering and get to it. It's a plausible statement. I love that line. I fucking get it. Like, seriously? That's all Holden needs to say. That little shit. She just left her family. Could have left him a note. Gosh. What a kid. What do you think? How do you think he was going to react? Like, Okay, at least he's honest with this kid. That's good. 
I didn't think you'd tell her. <laughs> yeah, hint, hint, huh? Oh, 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 oh. Pausing, pausing. All right, 659, that's where I'm at. One of you told me to remember the whole green eye infection thing. And then she told that soldier lady from last week's episode, or the last episode, uh, that, um, you know, it only itches. Or that soldier lady told her that. And now she just scratched her eye. <laughs> so we're gonna have some uh infectious stuff going on ooh, ooh, ooh. that's what i'm that's what i'm presuming i mean you wouldn't tell me to keep my eye on that unless it meant that that's gonna keep happening all right three two one play What was that? <laughs> I don't know what I just saw. Uh, is the daughter going to bitch her out before she can even say anything? <laughs> yep. What am I looking in here? Is that happening in the Rossi ship? Oh, fuel pellet, okay. Fuck the PM! <laughs> Jeez. Pretty much. <laughs> right? 
Uh, that's a good reaction right there from her. Oh, Mar- Oh, Bobby! Yes! So she's on a job right now? Oh. Ah. She's muscle. I like that. She's good at it, though. how she did that. <laughs> at least she's good at her job. Look at her smiling. All right, it's her cup of tea, I guess. Oh, he gets caught. Mm -mm -mm. Is that lover boy? Does he though? Or only when he has to? <laughs> I'm just teasing. It starts. Oh, shit. I'm glad they explained it like that. Mm. 
This guy. Mm -hmm. Damn, I'm telling you, Mercury is so fun to hate. I love it. I don't hate him, but you know what I mean. He's so good at it. But I understand his perspective. Uh, didn't I just disintegrate? Wow. That's uh that's quite that's quite a lot for like a five minute clip. Whole shitload of narrative there. Of course you weren't. Just gives him up like that. Uh. Asher, it's probably gonna rub it in her face that they should have killed him when they had the chance.
Oh boy. Don't say I told you so. That would have been a worse outcome, it seems. Ah, oh, when you think you've taken a step forward, huh? <laughs> kind of food you got there in room service? Big spender. It's a good way to put it. It's a really nice room. Big spender indeed. <laughs> she won't ever forgive you. <laughs> oh my gosh, Bobby has the worst luck with meeting people. A score that I think might go wrong. Mm-hmm. Open sesame. <laughs> That'd be pretty funny if like, all Holden has to do is put his hand on it, it just opens.
And if that's the case, Amos may have to do what he thinks needs to be done to her. That eye infection! Oh my gosh. She might contaminate everybody. She's touching stuff. She ain't washing her hands. So it's going to be some kind of virus. So cool showing the baby just hanging out like that. Serious? That's really convenient, just as they're there to do it. You set them up?
She's so kind. <laughs> um, gotta make her money though. I could see why. Uh, uh, uh. I hope that this doesn't backfire on them because the last time they tried to, uh, you know, explode something related to the protomolecule and end up, well, somebody got floored, <laughs> right? Really? Says the person who might have to kill you anyway. <laughs> I can barely I can't even see anything much on my screen. I guess this is intentionally dark. But seeing Wei's action that she just did with Amos, she might actually turn against Mercury then. That's why I'm, that's where my thoughts are going. Maybe her feelings for him will kind of shift her perspective. To do what? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Everything just got displaced. <laughs> Everybody's displaced. <laughs>
show just peppers in like the best humor. <laughs> Why do I get a feeling Marco's not the type that makes uh, mistakes? Are we going to see Fred and Dawes at some point, though? Until she mentioned them, I actually completely forgot about them as characters. Unless they're never going to show up again? I doubt it. Bobby, you are a trooper, girl. Hmm, climbing ladders. Just looking at it makes me nauseous. This goes right. Oh my god. Do not let this be how Bobby fucking dies or something. Okay, good.
It's a tight fit. Oh no, they're all gonna get this infection. Oh. Oh no, hold on. Captain America, this bitch, come on. Visually, this is beautiful. Beautiful. Oh, I'm loving this. The score, everything. This is great. But Holden, it's, he's, how's he gonna get inside? Yo, oh. Pull, 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 pull the fucking cord. Wow. Yo, they're now in the proto arc for 40 days and 40 nights. <laughs> All right, there you have it, people. That's that. Wow. <sighs> okay, so I will admit it has been challenging um, rounding, up, rounding up takeaways that are meaningful because I feel like in one way, a lot of the episode is kind of all its own takeaway by itself. You know what I mean. But, uh, hey, what can I do? That's what I get. So I'm going to try my best to give you what I actually will remember from this episode based on <laughs> each story arc. So, yeah. I don't know. I just feel like I wish I can give more, but I guess. It's... Eh. Okay. Enough of this. Really, yeah. Takeaways coming up. Okay, now it's time for my takeaways from episode six. <laughs> now I know that many of you these days, especially I've noticed, um, are not very willing to confirm or deny anything that I claim or suspect. And that's okay. And for those of you that are very much willing to clarify things and break things down without having to put in any spoilers, you know I appreciate your comments. Thank you very much. All right, so takeaway number one, Bobby. Bobby, 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 okay? So Bobby, I am so happy for my girl Bobby for being her, you know, making some money, getting her groove on the side. And now it seems as if she is a valuable asset to her team, this new team of criminals, okay? But when I look back at my notes from episode four um, and some of the comments, uh, that uh, many of you left on my YouTube channel, primarily. Now, I know you can't confirm or deny this, but it seems as if when it comes to Bobby's situation and the Belters, 
outside of Illus, okay, because that's a separate <laughs> subject, uh, all roads seem to be leading to Marco. <laughs> because in episode four, Marco seemed to have slipped up. I don't know if that was intentional, but it seemed like an, an, an unintentional slip up of his involvement with trades going on with Mars, which was noted again in this episode with Ashford. And so I'm wondering now if Bobby, who thinks... You know, she's doing the right thing for herself to help herself, help her family, you know, at the expense of what that will lead to probably a bigger problem down the road going right back to Marco. So in a nutshell, what I'm suspecting is that the stuff that they're stealing, the trading with the Belters is all going back to Marco to build something or do something that is going to work against everybody. Because there are no coincidences in this show. If there's anything I've learned, everything ties in with each other. It gives me the impression as a viewer that aside from what's going on on Illus, everything else in space and in the belt and on Mars is pretty much hashtag it's Marco all along. <laughs> and for those of you that are like, no, 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 Asha, I can confirm you are wrong. <laughs> then say it, okay? Because that's where my train of thought is going. And I feel so bad for Bobby because here would be something else that she tries to give her heart and soul to and do the best she can, even at the expense of almost losing her life at one point in this episode, which was so upsetting to see. But in the end, it could be for a bigger calamitous situation involving Marcos and whatever plans he has that I do not think the UN and other Belter factions are going to be happy with. Which now leads into takeaway number two, and that is Avasarala and the UN and everything going on on Earth. In this episode, although Avasarala was shown very briefly, that really short scene was very telling of one particular thing that I think I meant to take in as a viewer, and that is not only is there such a large gap or a large delay of communication, I think it was what, six, five or six hours or so? But also, more importantly, they no longer have any communication happening with what's going on on Illus. And their dependence on relaying information and trusting the information they're getting from Medina Station now is an issue. Which now leads me to wonder, isn't this not the best kind of opportunity for the OPA, primarily Drummer and Ashford, right? For them to actually get the upper hand over the whole situation around the ring because if earth is behind in knowing what the hell is going on drummer and ashford are they not in a position where they could take action without the sanction or without the approval of the un and perhaps win out over them in some way Overall, what I'm trying to relate is that I don't feel they would have showed me as a viewer this disadvantage all of a sudden that Avrasarala has in terms of being in the know of what's going on in contrast with the advantage Drummer and Ashford have with the Medina Station to somewhat kind of put the pieces together a lot faster without having to go through the UN and maybe not suffer such major consequences. Obviously, if I've completely misunderstood that or I'm not getting a grasp of, as to how that really works, let me know in the comments if you're so gracious enough to at least break it down for me. But that's what I think I'm understanding, so I just can't see how Drummer and Ashford won't be able to use this somehow to their advantage to advance their own plans without repercussions. And as for my last takeaway, obviously it's everything going on on Illus. Everything. Like, everything. Okay? I don't want to repeat them all. I don't think I need to. Illus, in this episode, and everything happening on it, is my last takeaway. I know it seems kind of lazy. <laughs> I mean, really, though, what else can I say? There was so much going on. From we pledging her loyalty to Mertry about choosing the RCE first if things uh, hit the fan with them starving and all that, which I don't think she'll do. I think she's going to have a change of mind and she's going to go up against Mertry and maybe there might be some interwar thing going on between the RCE people and uh, Amos may have to try to save her. Or the other way around, the RCE might just start attacking everybody. Who knows? All I know 
is that there's definitely going to be some drama that will fall with Wee, Amos, and Mertry all together on that end. And then we have Dr. Alvi and the uh, scratchy, scratchy old eye there, <laughs> okay? And the little belter kid who's scratching his eyes too. And so that leads me to believe there's going to be some kind of infectious virus or something biological that is going to affect them all physically and how that's going to tie in with everything happening on the atmosphere that is unpredictable, unstable. And poor Alex, well, not really poor Alex, but Alex and... um. Naomi are now stuck in orbit, having to witness all of that helplessly. And there's nothing much they can do. And on that subject, we have the whole thing where all these ships in orbit are in a stasis situation. And one of them, I forgot the name of the ship, the Barbie Cola or something, whatever. That ship is going to crash and burn. And it seems it's hashtag blame the protomolecule again. So yeah, the whole damn thing is a takeaway. <laughs> Overall, although I know there's so much more information to pick apart in this episode, I'll leave it up to you, my Expanse guides, to be the ones to break down a lot of that stuff in the comment section. But I know for myself, the last 10 minutes of this episode was absolutely captivating. I love the visual of the tsunami and Holden being the hero for the people, going out there bravely to close that door and jumping back in right on time to save his ass, and the detail and the scope of the visual spectacle being shown to me. That's the kind of TV eye candy you know I love to see. So there you have it. That is my reaction and my takeaways from episode six of the fourth season of The Expanse. If you enjoyed this video, the best way you can show me is by following those two simple prompts right there at the bottom right hand corner of your screen, I'd really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching and until episode 7, I'm Asha tuning out. Peace. Thanks for watching. Check out my other videos and subscribe. You know you wanna.